the truth about immigration and us racist Republicans. Mr. Reagan. Hey, do you guys remember when Kamala Harris ended the immigration crisis by addressing the root causes? We have to address the root causes. That was amazing. She is amazing. Years ago, I stumbled upon a video that explains the problem of immigration in a way that perfectly illustrates why the conservative closed door border policy is actually the most ethical. And not just for American citizens, but also for the majority of impoverished people around the world. I call this video the gumball video, and I'm going to play it for you in one moment. But first, of course, I have to sell you something. Noble Gold's CEO Colin Plume thinks that quantitative tightening is setting the stage for a gold bull run. In his interview with the National Desk, Plume said that tightening is pushing the value of the dollar up. However, he predicts that by next year, the Fed will print money again to restart economic activity. When it's down, gold is historically at its best. This means that now is a gold buying opportunity. If all this is going over your head and you don't really understand why you should invest in gold and silver at the moment, you should talk to Collins' team at Noble Gold. They'll run through everything and they'll hold your hand through the entire process if you're new. And they're giving away a beautiful 1 10th ounce gold American Eagle coin with every qualifying IRA or 401k this month. You cannot go wrong with Noble Gold. Call the team now at 877-646-5347 or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. That's Noble noblegoldinvestments.com. Some people say that mass immigration into the United States can help reduce world poverty. Is that true? Well, no, it's not. This gumball represents the one million legal immigrants that the United States has taken every year on average since 1990. Now, who in the world deserves our humanitarian compassion? The desperately poor of the world, they make less than $2 a day. And how many people make less than $2 a day in the world? In Africa alone, there are 650 million people who make less than $2 a day. And in India, 890 million people. China adds another 480 million. And unfortunately, the rest of Asia has a heartbreaking 810 million people make less than $2 a day. And finally, there's 105 million of Latin America's population that are desperately poor. All told, the World Bank says there are three billion people in the world who are desperately poor, making less than $2 a day. That's 3,000 gumballs. And every year, we take a million and suggest that we've somehow made a humanitarian difference. How many people in the world live in countries that have average incomes lower than that of Mexico? These three billion plus another 2.6 billion people. 5.6 billion people in the world who live in countries with average incomes below that of Mexico. And so what is it that the elites are telling us? They're telling us that when we take this one million immigrants, that we somehow or another are tackling world poverty. Even if we went by the most radical proposals in Washington, which are to actually double our immigration to two million a year, which would totally overwhelm our physical, natural, and social infrastructures, we couldn't make a noticeable difference. And we may be really hurting the impoverished people of the world because the million that we do take are among the most energetic, often the better educated, certainly the most dissatisfied people that if they did not immigrate would be the agents for change to improve the lot of all the people in these countries. The impossibility of making even a dent is actually worse than it looks here because Last year, when we took 1 million immigrants, these countries added 80 million more people into the impoverished population. And this year, a million legal immigrants, 80 million people. And next year, you can be quite sure that Congress will bring in another million immigrants. And these countries, unfortunately, will be adding another 80 million people. Don't you see, immigration can never be an effective or significant way to deal with the suffering people of the world. They have to be helped where they live. 99.9% .9 of them will never be able to immigrate to a rich country. There's no hope for that. The only place that 99.9% .9 of these people can be helped is where they live. Let's help them there. 
So the idea that this guy is trying to get across here, as you may have grasped, is that you can help more people by improving quality of life in impoverished nations than you can by letting a few lucky rule breakers into our own wealthy country. And this isn't just true for Americans. This is true for the UK, for Sweden, for Germany, for Hungary, and all the European countries currently inundated with immigrants, and really all first world or developed nations. And here is the really crazy thing, the, the thing that this guy doesn't mention. Of all the countries in the world that send money and other forms of aid to impoverished nations, the United States is by far the most generous. Americans give more dollars than people from any other country. Americans give seven times more dollars per year than the average German, 14 times more than the average Italians, and that's not because of income and it's not because of taxes. It's a true cultural difference. Right, a quarter trillion dollars a year of charity uh, by Americans. That's America. right. Now that's actually more than the whole national income of Sweden or Denmark or Norway. That's how much we give. Because you see, Americans are not actually evil racists. <laughs> and that is a really important point to make, because if you're a leftist, you might think that most of this money is being sent overseas from Democrat bank accounts. But no, actually, it's mostly coming from Republicans. Research shows that Republicans give significantly more money to charity than Democrats. Republicans volunteer more of their time than Democrats. And Republicans even donate more blood than Democrats. On average, conservative families give more dollars to charity than liberal families, in spite of, according to some data, making slightly less income. Conservatives have done more for poor people than any movement in human history. It's not Democrats who are the good, caring, generous Americans. It's Republicans. And here's the twist. Democrat politicians actually know all of this. They know that by helping a few people here and there, by opening up the borders, it does not significantly help the vast majority of impoverished people throughout the world. So why do they do it? Well, they think it'll help secure Democrat political power in Washington, D.C. Democrat politicians know that immigrants and the children of illegal immigrants tend to vote Democrat. And so it is in their best interest to bring as many immigrants in as possible, both legal and illegal. The more immigrants they bring in, the more they tilt the scales in their favor. Any illegal immigrant that comes into the country today and gives birth to a child, well, that child will be able to vote in 18 years. And when that happens, Democrats expect that they'll vote Democrat. And so, yeah, it's a long game. But Democrats also hold on to some hope that in the interim, they'll be able to pass amnesty for current illegal immigrants living in America. This is something that they push for constantly. You see, Democrats don't really care whether or not they present the best ideas to the American people. They know that they don't. They know that they're never going to win a political debate by proving that they have the best ideas because their policies are actually destructive and they help no one but the politicians themselves. And so they have to win votes in other ways. Tucker Carlson has called this out on his show and Democrats immediately took to Twitter to condemn him as an evil racist. The point of amnesty, he suggested, is not just to give citizenship to 11 million people. The point is to import as many new Democratic voters as possible, and there's no limit. So what do you do with a racist theory chanted by white supremacists, embraced by killers, used for hate for generations? Well, if you're Tucker Carlson, you embrace it again and again and again. Furthermore, it makes Democrat politicians look good. We're the good guys. We're the ones trying to help poor people by sharing our abundant wealth with these poor immigrants. But they're not actually sharing anything. The Democrats who craft policies that lead to unfettered illegal immigration, they have zero expectation that they will ever be directly impacted by these illegal immigrants. They don't have to share any of their own stuff. In fact, I don't think that they expect to ever even see one of these illegal immigrants in real life. They're not sharing their own wealth. They're sharing the abundant wealth of other Americans. Your wealth, your towns, your culture. And some people on the left who perhaps catch a glimpse of this video, they'll protest, but what about asylum seekers? Well, they can't always file paperwork. Some of them just need to cross in illegally. No, they don't. They just need to go through the border at a designated border crossing and speak with a border patrol agent there. This was made clear in an exchange between AOC and the head of Immigration and Customs Enforcement at the time, Thomas Homan. Zero tolerance was interpreted as the policy that separated children from their If parents. I get arrested for DUI, and I have a young child in the car, I'm going to be separated. When I was a police officer in New York and I arrested a father for domestic violence, I separated that Mr. father Mr. Holman, with all due respect, 
legal asylees are not charged with any crime. When you're in the country illegally, it's violation 8 United States Code 1325. Seeking asylum is legal. If you want to seek asylum, you go through the port of entry, do it the legal way. The Attorney General of the United States has made that clear. Okay. And the truth is that most asylum applications are fraudulent. My best guess is that well over 50% of asylum applications are fraudulent. The truth is that most of the people who approve asylum applications are Democrats. They want these people in the country. I suspect that a lot of officials, when they go through and they fill out this paperwork, I think that they know that a lot of these applications are fraudulent and they just let these people go through anyway. You see, I've been through this process myself. I'm not an immigrant, but I am very close to somebody who is. And I can tell you, these people are leftists. They are all leftists. I'm not sure. I haven't done an undercover investigation, but my best guess is that a lot of fraudulent applications are just passed through. And you know what? There are a lot of unintended harms that come with open borders. Illegally crossing into the United States from Mexico can be extremely dangerous, especially for women and girls. In 2018, a report out of Princeton estimated that aliens attempting to cross illegally into the United States suffered 118,000 rape attacks, 138,000 assault or robberies, 102,000 of these illegal aliens were kidnapped or being extorted, and 27,000 of them were being trafficked. An estimated 81,000 were drug smugglers, and 2,200 of them died making the journey. Now, in 2018, there were 711,000 attempted crossings. By the end of 2022, it's expected that there will be 2.1 million crossings, three times as many. That means that there will be at least three times as many violent attacks. That means 6,500 deaths, 300,000 kidnappings, and 350,000 rapes. This is why tightly regulating the border is the moral policy. And it's why the generous policy of open borders is immoral. The primary reasons that conservatives give for opposing open borders are the massive numbers of criminals and drugs that enter the country, and that the cheap labor of illegal immigrants takes jobs from the lowest income working Americans. And this includes many low-income black Americans and Hispanic Americans. And these points are totally valid, and we should repeat them. But hopefully, I gave you guys a few more reasons that you can use to convince your liberal friends that maybe open borders isn't actually the best policy. Well, that's it for me. And remember, it's not that the liberal friends are ignorant. It's just that they know so much that is not so. Good night. We're at war with the most dangerous enemy that has ever faced mankind in his long climb from the swamp to the stars. And it's been said if we lose that war, and in so doing lose this way of freedom of ours, history will record with the greatest astonishment that those who had the most to lose did the least to prevent its happening.